Variable forces 4, we're going to learn about straight line horizontal motion with non-constant acceleration and uh, as you would have seen if you watched the previous video, we're talking about rectilinear motion, one dimensional motion. It's a type of straight line motion so we can relax any vector notation and this one here we're looking at horizontal rectilinear motion, how Hooke's law begats or I should say how simple harmonic motion is begatted by Hooke's law. Perhaps those people uh, who look after their grammar might be able to comment on my use of grammar just there, i.e. not great. Anyway, let's commence. So Hooke's law, uh, f equals negative kx, is about when you've got something um, elastic and, for example, um, a, a mass attached to a string. Uh, spring and Hooke's law is an operation it basically says the restoring force is proportional to how far the object has been displaced from its equilibrium position and this constant k it's a scalar or a constant it's basically what's called the spring constant and um, it's basically how stiff the spring is how much restoring effort uh, it will put in and how much the string the spring I should say is deformed based on force applied or, or deformation applied. So you can tell by the negative side that the restoring force is in the opposite direction to the initial deformation. And as this thing moves, we'll be talking about simple harmonic motion in a minute, the force, the restoring force is in the opposite direction to the, uh, the velocity of the object. So here we've got a good little FET PHET um, simulation here and we've got uh, a couple of springs you can see hanging up there and um, there's two places where we're going to hang different springs. They're both set to the same spring constant. Can you see that? And I might uh, hoik up there a 50 gram weight and a 100 gram weight and this is a system where no energy is lost to things such as friction. Now because the weight of the mass on the left is twice of that on the right, it has a substantially different effect on things like the, um, the period and what about the amount of deformation? Well if we put our scale there, we seem to be getting around about the one metre, uh, an extent of one metre below um, the top of the spring. The amplitude, which I'll talk about in a minute, of the spring seems to be about 50, whereas the one on the left is, seems to be much less than that. Less than that. So, yeah, it seems to be around about half. So that's interesting. So in 10 seconds, how many, um, how many oscillations will we see if the 50 grand one? Ready, steady, go. One, two, three, four. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, it's about 17. So for the other one, we'll probably see quite a lot less. We'll try that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So yes, that was less than last time. Just added a couple of vectors on there, so we've got uh, gravity, um, the weight basically uh, pulling down and restoring force pulling up, and you can see that they oppose each other. Okay, so when one increases, the uh, the other one increases in kind. We've got um, velocity and acceleration, so we've got acceleration in yellow. We've got velocity in green, and can you see, if I slow it down, oh sorry, I'm not slowed down, basically we can see that a few phenomena are happening here now. I'm just going to stop that one, so we can just focus on the 100. So let's look at our velocity first, the green one. You can see that as it hits the top, it switches around, and the bottom it switches around, and it seems to be at its maximum in the middle. All right, it's, and its behavior of the um, velocity is very different to the behavior of the acceleration. The acceleration, once it gets past the center, it's due to Hooke's law, we have that force that 
tries to bring it back to the center which opposes the motion and hence we have an acceleration in kind because we have Newton's second law okay so you can see there that we have uh, different amplitudes and uh, like I said just before with the um, the big and the small mass there okay and the line this line here where my cursor is is the the line of equilibrium its rest position okay and the blue line is the highest extent that the mass is displaced so from Hooke's law we can move towards simple harmonic motion and we can see that the uh, because we have a force which is exerted by this the spring it goes in the opposite direction to the actual stretch or, com or compression and from that it's not a huge leap that if we've got force up here and acceleration down here we have a very close cousin and that's that's one of the simple harmonic motion formulas negative omega squared x and we're going to um, look at that in more detail now but that's that's where we start the um, there's a, a restoring acceleration because there's a restoring force the other results which you'll see below by the way um, we can get them um, I'm not going to show them in this video for the length consideration but we can use uh, the derivative and the variable acceleration formulas that we've been looking at to uh, arrive at the results I'll show you soon so to summarize simple harmonic motion happens when we've got some point mass moving along a straight line now it doesn't have to be up and down it can be horizontal okay and I did say horizontal um, in the title of the video it is mostly horizontal but simple harmonic motion can happen um, vertically as well so basically we've got um, the, this mass moving along a straight line so that its acceleration is always directed to the center the origin okay and it's directly proportional to its distance from the origin the particle will oscillate about uh, the origin between two extremes let's call them p and q all right so situations can be modeled using shm um, not just a spring but pendulums and and molecular vibrations so this summarizes that motion we saw in the animation there so if we have our origin in the middle um, we've got our amplitude capital A and then the amplitude at the other end which is called negative A so when we're at point P we have these quantities here so we have uh, displacement at negative a we have the x dot which is the velocity it's zero so it's turning around okay and its acceleration is omega squared a we have a maximum acceleration at that point okay because we have a maximum force at the other end we have pretty much a mirror of that okay the acceleration is going the other way in the middle at the origin displacement zero the velocity is omega a and there's two there's two um, ways that can happen it can happen in each direction hence the plus or minus and the acceleration is zero because the restoring force is zero if you think about Hooke's law so whether x is displacement or position um, its origin is O, its time is T, the motion is described by the equations you see below and A, omega and alpha are constants uh, omega is considered to be greater than zero so is the amplitude which might contradict slightly what we saw above here but amplitude is just considered to be a distance okay so we, we don't consider the negative aspect okay so you might see these on a formula sheet that you use and we've got the acceleration now the acceleration sometimes is written as d squared x dt squared for obvious reasons and sometimes it's x double dot the second derivative but you don't often get a because there's another a here amplitude so to avoid confusion we tend to use x double dot or the second derivative okay so use those and so the acceleration is negative omega squared x 
um, x is a sine omega t plus alpha or sometimes a cos omega t plus beta okay and you can see it's just a matter of a phase shift there between the two of them if you know your trigonometry um, v the velocity is given by that and remember these are, these are all from um, applying calculus as I mentioned just before you could also use that version there remember the velocity uh, can be in either direction okay hence the plus or minus the period is 2 pi over omega which should ring bells if you've studied trigonometry which you would have by now and uh, like you might have seen before the reciprocal of the period is frequency now uh, using what we've got above here we can also use um, the acceleration equation in that form just by subbing in the actual value of x from here okay omega is called the angular frequency okay and it's related to the period just as the parameter b is related to the period when you're studying trig functions and trig waves okay uh, alpha as I said is a phase shift so beta is just a different phase shift you should know the relationship between sine and cosine um, from before and it depends on the initial position I'll be talking about initial position being the origin in this video okay um, handy things that to realize the velocity the maximum speed of the particle is when we have omega times a and in other words the greatest value of that expression there which is 1 okay so when the when that is equal to 1 we have the maximum speed acceleration the maximum magnitude of the acceleration is omega squared a all right well, that uh, corresponds to when this has its maximum value now it just said magnitude there by the way because the direction can be in two directions so let's do two examples now so we've got some simple harmonic motion here um, we've got this equation here given to us which we can deduce some values from um, the displacement equation in part a we've got to find the, the particles velocity at times t so v of t okay so you've got to be careful which equation we choose well what we're going to do here is actually just apply calculus so dx dt using the chain rule is 2 pi on 3 times 4 times the cosine of 2 pi t on 3 so we have 8 pi on 3 cos 2 pi t on 3 and that's, that's the answer to that one so the second derivative will give us the particles acceleration at time t so we go through and we basically look at dv dt which we had in the previous question and so we've just got to multiply that through using the chain rule we've got 2 pi on 3 times 8 pi on 3 and it's going to be negative because cos becomes negative sine 2 pi t on 3 and that has a negative 16 pi squared over 9 sine 2 pi on 3 t I guess I should put the units on this, shouldn't I? Because we've given centimeters and seconds, so there'll be centimeters per second, and that'll be centimeters per second per second. Okay, so part C, this the period of the motion. So we have two pi and omega. So that would be now. Let's identify omega from here. From the given expression, omega is two pi on three. So we have a fraction on a fraction so those cancel out and we have three seconds so lastly and for this one we've got to find the particles maximum speed so v max 
Well, we know Vmax happens uh, at the origin, whether that's useful or not, it's worth noting. But we've also got an expression for that, so dx dt is at its max, like I said earlier, when the trig part here, cos, is at its max, and it, cos values have a range of negative 1 to 1, so when cos 2 pi on 3t equals 1. Alright, so if we have that, we we have dx dt then equals 8 pi on 3 times 1, which is 8 pi on 3 centimeters per second. Final example, particle moves in a straight line, uh, we're given the acceleration there, negative 9x, x is the position at time t, and we've got some other information, starts at the origin, and its initial velocity is 4, so part A, calculate the period and the amplitude. So, period is 2 pi over omega. Now, from the given expression here for acceleration, we have negative omega squared x, so basically omega squared equals 9, and from what we said earlier, we just take the positive of that. So omega is 3, so we can put that back in, 3 radians per second, and we've got 2 pi over 3 seconds, Rad the radians cancel out. Okay, so for the amplitude, I'm going to use this expression here, because we have all the other information, um, noting that there, that's been provided for us. So, we have 4 squared equals, now we know omega squared's 9, outside of a squared, the unknown, and at that point, we have, at time 0, we have 0 displacement, so that's 0. So by doing a bit of rearranging, you can come up with A is 4 thirds centimetres. So lastly, we've got to come up with expressions for position, velocity and acceleration at time t. So with displacement, we know that's the form there from our formula sheet. So x, now we can use all of these things we've been given here. It's 4 thirds sine. Then we've got omega up here, which is 3, 3t. Now... Alpha equals zero because it starts at the origin we just saw. So that's, that's our expression there. So now velocity is the derivative. So we have three times four thirds cos three t. Which is four cos three t. Okay, so that one will be in centimetres, this one will be in centimetres per second. So the acceleration is the derivative of that velocity expression, so we have negative, because we get becomes negative sine, negative 12 sine 3t centimetres per second squared, or centimetres per second per second. Finito.